Hello, I am Dominic and this is Software Without Code. Today I'll show you how to use AI to do sentiment analysis on Trump tweets. This topic will be done in two different ways in two different videos in the future, but uh, this first video will cover the faster, easier method, enabling you to see the tweet sentiment within minutes. Keep in mind there are lots of different ways to do sentiment analysis, and performance-wise it depends on your use case, but the method in this video is probably good enough for most uses. Alright, so first thing we need to do is make sure the program orange is installed it's free software available in the link um, at the link in the description of this video and it's also the same link you see here in the video uh, on the screen right now in the URL bar of my browser the second thing we need to do is to acquire some Trump tweets so I went to this website also link will be in the description uh, Trump Twitter archive and I got a random assortment of tweets uh, about a year a time span of about a year and let's look at the data sheet or a spreadsheet, and this is what it looks like. Uh, but yeah, about a year's tweets, there's 3,000 something here, and uh, it has a lot of useless columns like source, created at, retweet count, favorite count. I'm gonna leave them in because I'll show you how to remove them inside the program. And great, so now, uh, assuming you've got Orange installed, we're going to have to install an add-on to Orange in order to analyze, uh, analyze this text, but to do so, we need to open it as an administrator. In order to open Orange as administrator on Windows, open up your Windows uh, Start menu and then start typing the word Orange. It should pop up in your search results. Right click on the desktop application uh, icon and hit Run as administrator. Now a dialog will pop up that you, you uh, say yes to continue opening it as administrator if you're comfortable doing so. It popped up on my other monitor so you're not seeing it on the screen right now. I'm hitting yes. And there we go, Orange has popped up. So we'll see this dialog that's new, open recent tutorials examples, get started. Just hit new. Now open the options tab at the top and hit the add-ons button, like so. It'll retrieve a package list and search for text. Uh, just start typing text and it'll pop up. It's a package called text and we'll be using this same version here, 0.5.2. So hit the check box on the text add-on. The action will say install, and when you're when you've done so, hit the OK at the bottom. It'll install text. Now it's going to take a few minutes to complete, so I'm going to skip ahead uh, to when it's done. There isn't much feedback from the UI though on the progress of the installation, so you're just going to have to leave it like this for a while. Welcome back. So now our add-on is finished installing, and we see the dialog message that says, "Please restart Orange for changes to take effect." So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to close it, and I'm going to open it up again. So orange is loading. Uh, not opening it as administrator this time, I'm just opening it regularly. Uh, so anyways, now we see the new open recent again, just hit new. And we're ready to start building our model now. The first thing we want to do is drag out several blocks. Now first thing you'll notice is on the left menu here, I'm going to scroll down a bit you'll see a text mining option on the far left side and this is what was installed with that text add-on we just we just uh, brought into this orange application so let's click on text mining let's drag out a few blocks first we're going to drag out corpus we're also going to use this sentiment analysis widget just take a second to load and we'll also want to use a corpus viewer Great, so this is enough to get started, uh, but we will ultimately be expanding with more blocks. So let's connect Corpus to Sentiment Analysis and then double click on Corpus. You'll see a screen that looks like this. Now we'll browse, I, I've already got it selected, but you'll browse to find your Trump Tweets CSV or, or spreadsheet file, whatever it is, and just make sure that in the Use Text Features, now text features are the input text for the sentiment system that you only have the text for the tweet there whatever your column is called in your spreadsheet in the ignored text features uh, every other uh, feature that is not the the tweet of or the text of the tweet itself so for example created at is over here great so we have that we see oh there's actually 3647 tweets altogether and this says here five other features, and I'll show you how to remove those because we don't really care about the unimportant stuff like the retweet count for the sentiment analysis. So let's close that. Let's open sentiment analysis. 
you'll see a dialogue that looks something that looks like this. Now there's two methods. There's Vader and Liu Hu, and I might be mispronouncing that. Uh, we're going to be using the Liu Hu method in this video. It has English and Slovenian. Well, we do it using English, of course. And this method returns a single sentiment score. That is, more the more positive, the the more positive the number value, the more positive the sentiment of the text. And similarly, for the more negative the number value, the more negative the sent the sentiment of the te text. The Vader method. The Vader method is a little more complicated uh, because it returns actually four values. It returns a positive score, a negative score, a neutral score, and a compound score. It's actually a great sentiment analysis system that works especially well for social media uh, because it has slang built into it. It's more of a rule-based system that several re researchers put together uh, a few years ago. We won't be using it though because it's a little harder to interpret and the Lee Hue method is more straightforward and the whole point of this was to build, do the quickest, most straightforward approach to sentiment analysis of Trump tweets possible. Great. Now that that's out of the way, we'll close that and then we'll drag out, a f we'll drag out another block. Uh, in the data tab on the left, we're going to drag out a block called select columns. And this is how we're going to remove those unnecessary data features that we don't care about. So the select columns dialog will look something like this. Now, I must I did this earlier, so that's why it defaults these values uh, the way it is. But these values, I'll just show you. You'll probably see something that looks that looks a little bit like uh, there we go. Something that looks a little bit like this, with all these features and member features are inputs to our uh, sentiment analysis system. Uh, we only want sentiment here as the only feature for our system. All the other ones are unimportant, unnecessary, don't want them. So I clicked on one and then I shift clicked the bottom one to select the all of them but sentiment. And then I hit this arrow to move it into the available variables. So the available variables are the ignored variables. We won't use those into our sentiment analysis system. And once you've done that, we can close this dialog. Cool, we're, we're just about done. Now what's left is we're gonna do some visualizations. So we'll start off by doing a visualization. Go back to the text mining tab on the left. Uh, Pre-processed text and word cloud. So we'll do a word cloud. So connect the select columns to the pre-processed text. It'll do its stuff, showing a percentage of completion. This is the dialog bo box you get when you double click on the pre-processed text. I think the default values you'll see are, are the ones here. Uh, we want to select remove URLs because we don't care about those in the word cloud. And we'll select tweet for tokenization. Now under this tokenization tab. Tokenization, all it simply means is it defines how we break apart the text into tokens or also words. So, so think of a word as being a token, but there's different ways to split it up. So for example, some people treat uh, punctuation as separate tokens. Some people treat like smiley faces as and like other emojis as separate tokens. And so we'll just select the tweet one because whatever they've, they've decided on for tweets, whoever wrote this program, it's probably going to be good enough. So great, let's close that. And then we'll connect pre-processed text to the word cloud. Probably take a second, there we go. Let's double click on it and we see a word cloud. Now immediately I can see here that there's lots of punctuation. Uh, the word great, but then there's this exclamation mark, commas, uh, we probably want to remove those and we could probably do so with a bit more uh, word pre-processing, but that's that's okay. We won't do that in this video because we can still see a lot of other uh, popular words like president, great, Democrats, America, news, Trump. Trump tweets about Trump apparently. People, country, uh, meeting, Russia, etc. And so it gives you kind of a, a cool idea, a cool sense of of the, the the most important or most common words used inside of a body of text documents. The document being a tweet in this case. So now that we've done the word cloud, let's close it. Now, how do we see the actual sentiment values, you might be wondering? Well, we're going to use a heat map. So a heat map, if we go to visualization, and we can find heat map in here somewhere. There it is. I'm going to click. Uh, you can click on it or drag it out. I just clicked on it there, and just clicking on it is sufficient to put the block in your canvas. Let's connect select columns to heat map. And then here, we'll go back to the text mining tab and select uh, Corpus Viewer. Oh, we already brought it out, right, ahead of the game. So let's connect heat map to Corpus Viewer. And you'll see why in a second, but it's just easier to get 
the connections done first before we do the settings. Let's double click on heat map. You'll see something like, well actually you won't see something like this. Again, I was playing around with it earlier, shame on me. But uh, you'll see something probably similar to this, what you have here. And we can see that the blue is the more negative and the yellow is the more positive sentiment. You can change the colors here. I'm going to leave it as blue-yellow. Uh, and we're going to make this a little more sensible to get a better a better understanding of the sentiment of Trump tweets at bulk. So let's hit merge by k-means and we'll cluster under the cluster column, we'll choose, or sorry, the cluster section, we'll choose rows. But before I continue, just note that each row here uh, would represent uh, a tweet. Uh, and in this case, these are clusters uh, of tweets. So each row would be a cluster of tweets. Now what we want to do is we want to uh, take these clusters and group them by rows and we'll see what this does is it actually groups the the positive tweets more so the more positive the tweet the more towards the bottom it is and the more negative the tweet the more towards the top it is it lets us just get a better visualization and you can see a little bit of a breakdown here but um, essentially what we have now is we can see at a high level glance the sentiment of Trump tweets and actually despite uh, what we might have seen in the last heat map visual before merging uh, with k-means and clustering by rows. It actually looks uh, fairly split even between uh, negative and positive with this large neutral section here. Uh, I would not, I would not uh, just visually, I'm sure you could prove this with quantitatively or, or using a computer, but just, you know, just initial observations, it looks like there's almost as many positive as negative tweets. And in fact, the positive sentiment is 22.65, which is a little greater in terms of magnitude than the negative 18.01 for, for the negative sentiment. So now the we might want to like observe some of these tweets and take a look and see what, what sorts of things are considered negative. So let's select, I just clicked on the starting point and dragged down and this will select the negative most tweets. So I'm selecting the rows of tweets and the negative most rows. And then I can just close this and go to our corpus viewer. So the selected rows from the heat map will appear here in the corpus viewer. And we can see the sentiment and the text. So the fake news is going all, all out in order to demean and den denigrate such hatred. That's pretty negative. So that's what I would expect. Let's go to document 27. Today's court decision means that Congress must close loopholes that block removal of dangerous criminal aliens, including aggravated felons. This is a public safety crisis that can only be fixed by dot dot dot. Again, seems fairly negative. So, yeah, and then, you know, fight back, anything bad about the rigged witch hunt, they scream of destruction. So we can see that, yeah, that seems to have captured a lot of negative tweets. Okay, so now uh, we're done. Thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a comment if you enjoyed this or want to give me some feedback, what you want to see next. Or if you're confused by this, uh, I'll try to respond to every comment. I will respond to every comment on this video. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you felt it helpful or you liked the video as well. Thanks for watching.